Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with a review for Black Ink Crew Chicago, Season 5, nope, Season 4, Episode 9. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so they're at the shop shooting the shits, you know, sitting around, not doing nothing. Now that four is gone, it's just Don and Van and the women. Okay, so a whole bunch of emotional bitches <laughs> that way. They sitting around talking about getting their toes sucked. Cobra comes in and she was like, hey, you guys, have you seen this article in the Chicago Tribune? I said, oh, they didn't got a reputable newspaper to <laughs> join in on the fool of fucking niggotry. But evidently, Charmaine got to run in her mouth to some reporter. Supposedly, it was, uh, was going to be an article about the shop. And I guess she must have mentioned that uh, Ryan shot up the place when he left. So, the Chicago Tribune has put that in an article. Now, there is an investigation that is pending because you can't go around shooting up a motherfucking tattoo shop. <laughs> Ryan said that he did not do that, even though at the beginning of the season, they edited it to make it look like he did do it. His Instagram, he's saying that he didn't do it. But they're claiming that there is a video surveillance um, of someone, I guess, looking like Ryan or Ryan carrying a rifle and uh, shooting up the place. Child. You know, Charmaine. Oh my God, if he finds out that I said anything to the reporter, he's going to think that I was a snitch. If you would shut the fuck up sometimes and quit running your mouth all the damn time. People that talk a whole lot like that, sometimes they don't even realize what the hell they're saying. So she probably didn't do it on purpose. If we was really going by the entertainment factor of the show, because I don't even believe none of this happened. But for the show's sake, you telling the damn newspaper that the place was shot up by Ron, what the hell you think was going to happen, girl? So yeah, you did. You dry snitched, but you snitched. Lily and Van is just like, oh, well, you know, basically you do the crime you got to pay the time and that's true okay if you are childish and crazy enough to go shoot up a place because you so pissed off then you deserve to go to jail I guess but it's just like well damn we don't need your own friend even if it's a former friend you know handing you over to the police do we and later on we see uh, Reese she's complaining that she doesn't have an actual space there and she has a client coming in you know it's not fair shit four is not there um, Charmaine was like, why don't we just give her four a spot? Because much like a closed mouth, an empty booth does not get paid. So let her work in four spots since he didn't ran off to Los Angeles. Right as, um, Reese is happily moving into her new spot, Cobra comes in. And once she sees that Reese is moving in there, child, immediately, Cobra has an attitude. What? This shit is not fair. When Ryan left, she moved to Houston. Okay, but then when they told her she could come back and get her spot back, you know, she's back there now. She's been there for three years. She got more seniority. Why she don't have a spot? Yada, yada, yada. Why this bitch can come in here and take the spot? I'm just like, can we just bring it on down a little bit? Why do you have to get so mad? Cobra with her big titties all up in the girl's faces. Girl's like, did you just call me a bitch? I was like, listen, this ain't what you want. Because that damn Cobra looked like she would have slung that girl around like a rag doll. Cobra big titties all in her face like this. Yes, I called you a bitch. That's my spot. It don't make no sense. They arguing back and forth. And I'm just sitting there like, why does everything have to go from one to a hundred? Van has to jump in between them. Cobra go running off and hitting the walls and everything. I said, don't fuck up your tattoo hand girl mess up your money and then van you know he got to take it up to their level listen god damn it we just lost four we don't have any more reason to lose another artist we gonna fix the shit damn reese go in there where four work cobra you can have my office fuck i don't work up in the front of me and lily a rotate or something but damn it don't always have to be all of this i said listen to van trying to be the adult now that he's the one that's supposedly in charge you see how fucking stupid and immature they all are <laughs> Now, four is in Los Angeles, okay? He told everybody bye, and you know what? He just got to do what he got to do. He's there. He's about to make it happen. He got his boy Ryan with him, okay? Because when he was telling Ryan about what was going on, Ryan was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go with you too, okay? Have a pop-up shop out there. Um, since the shop is not done anyway in Chicago, you know, let me go to L.A. and see about tattooing some people out that way. So, uh, yeah, it's a two-for-one here. So, uh, yeah, they're there, you know, it's... 
in and out burgers, it's Del Taco, it's Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. I was like, oh, I miss home so much, you guys. It's about to be on. Hey, have you talked to Kat? Ryan was like, hell no, nah, nigga, you trying to get me put out again? <laughs> no. He ain't reaching out. He knows she there, but no, he, he has no intentions of reaching out to Kat. I said, knowing Kat, that bitch will show up some damn where. Anyway, they go to London on the tracks, house, side note. Didn't London look different when he was in Chicago? When did nigga get dark? <laughs> I was just looking at him like, is that the same guy? But I guess it is. They had London on the track's house. London introduces them to his team. You know, this one do that, this one do that, this one do the other. And um, yeah, we all gonna work together. We gonna get to this money. London on the track believes in Ford. And that's when Ryan, you know, gives him his props and tells him how proud he is of Ford and all of that. You know, let's make it happen, okay? Cheers. Good for four. Has anybody heard his music? Now we see four at the studio with We Got London on the track. London there with the nigga had his leather and his zippers and studs and rhinestones and stripes. I was like, that nigga look like Carly Rae at the three. <laughs> I can't stand when people be inside and have on sunglasses. I know that that is the thing they do in the music industry. That shit irks me. You just look crazy. So he's in there, you know, he all producered out. He want Ford to get up in the booth, okay? And Ford is like, I don't really know exactly, you know. He tight, you know. He got to loosen up, you know. He got to get into the flow of things. Like, y'all don't smoke no weed or nothing. Drink something, you know, so everybody can get into their creative space. No, London on the track says get up in the booth, okay? So, um, Ford get up there. He trying to say a simple rap of, if I told you once, I told you again. I just linked with London, dog. That's my man. I'm going beast. Those three lines took him all fucking night to get out. And London on the track was like, nope, that's not it. Try it again. Nope, that's not it. One more time. Rewind it. And I understand these producers know what they want. They got a sound in mind and everything. But why motherfuckers got to be so damn mean? You're like micromanaging. Like, I just... I've always just been from the school of you get more flies with honey than vinegar. He is just sort of rude. Like, no, you ain't doing nothing right. Like, I know, I know what the sound that I want. And you can say all of that. But I just never will understand why people got to be so fucking rude. You, you don't get that kind of, like, I'm not the person to approach like that. Okay, if you want the best out of me, you gonna have to just be able to talk to me because fuck, I'm a grown ass woman and I don't need a motherfucker sitting up here telling me I'm doing everything wrong and I know what I want. You do what I say, you know, and I pay it. This is my place and I, you know, I mean, I guess that's why, I'm, you know, that's why I ain't in that industry because child, I can't, that, that was a whole bunch. It's a grown ass man you talking to like you're a fucking child, but. Four says that that was more, you know, ammunition and more inspiration for him. So, I mean, I guess it worked for him, but I was just like, this motherfucker asshole. Now, jumping over to Ryan, we see him at his pop-up shop. He's doing um, tattoos at some, you know, boutique on Melrose. He got some friends there. They all happy to see him. He's got his big time celebrity clients coming there. What was the guy's name? I didn't even write his name down. But anyway, he mentions to Ryan about the article in the Chicago Tribune. And uh, Ryan was like, yeah, I, I know Charmaine talked to the damn uh, reporters, but you know, <laughs> I'm here. Okay, you see me, I, I'm not in jail or nothing, right? I can't worry about it, not one bit. Ryan said that shit don't phase him, even though it is kind of dirty that Charmaine would do him dirty like that. And then, of course, social media blows shit up. If it would have just been an article in the newspaper 20 years ago, nobody would have known about it. But the fact that social media can get something retweeted within um, a minute, thousands and thousands and thousands of people have seen it. It's just changed the game a lot. And he's strong enough to weather the storm. Fuck, he might have to go off on some people every now and then, but it ain't gonna never bring him down. So right now, you know what, motherfuckers at the shop don't phase him, okay? This won't stop. Now, it's some downtime for and Ryan decide to go to the club, I guess, with London on the... Was that London on the track, child? Every time I see him, I was just like, who is that? Okay, he just looks different. Was that him they was with anyway? They go to the club. Four say he don't feel like he needs to be at the club, though, you know, because he still, you know, he ain't got no music out. And so he just feel like it's still work to be done and he shouldn't be celebrating and even having no downtime. But 
they at the club. He gonna make the best of it. At the same time, we see that Nikki has decided to come to L.A. to surprise him. She said that London on the track has been going real hard on four and it's been a lot on them. So she's gonna come there and surprise him. Get the place all romantical. Put a bunch of flowers around, candles, put on her lingerie and lay in the bed and wait for her man. Well, at the club, her man is still there. It's three o'clock in the morning. He's enjoying himself and then Ryan gets a call. And Ryan looks kind of, you know, a little protective turbed over in the corner on the bar you know talking on the phone and then he goes and tells Ford that um, that was his lawyer calling and saying that the police had came by the shop I said nigga at five o'clock in the goddamn morning <laughs> Y'all didn't plan that well, okay? Nigga, it's 3 o'clock in the morning in L.A. It's 5 o'clock in the morning in Chicago. Your lawyer couldn't wait till a little later. I was like, now y'all know that man ain't called Ryan at the crack of dawn like that. Sure, but anyway, you know, Ryan was like, he got to be dealing with bullshit like this while he in L.A. Fuck all them, all right? Yeah, he ain't got time for the bullshit. He know he didn't do it, and that's exactly why he left their asses alone. Now, they finally leave the club and take it on back to the crib and when they get inside Nikki is up there you know they was like who the fuck is that you know that damn Ford looked like he was about to run he looked scared London like grabbed his arm like no 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 like it's it's okay y'all tell me was that London on the track I promise you I don't remember if that was him or not anyway Ryan was like is that Nikki and she was like yeah he's like is she naked and she was like yeah she might as well have been naked I mean it wasn't like Ryan is her man so you know he don't need to be seeing her in her lingeries but um you know, they leave and, and she, you know, she's all, hey, baby, you know, you didn't came home all late. You ain't getting no ass now. You know, he's all, no, oh, you know, cute, cute, whatever. The next day we see Ryan and Four. You know, Ryan has this big bouquet of, of um, blush colored roses and um, he is taking it somewhere. I think we're kind of assuming that it is going to Rachel and maybe she's flown down. But nope, that's not it. We find out that he is about to do a tattoo for the queen, Nicki Minaj. Because she is in Los Angeles and she is promoting her album, Queen, that she has pushed back. But that's neither here nor there. She was doing a video. Um, I'm just like, when did they film this? Because I swear we just saw her get the tattoo a few weeks ago. Before they used to film these reality shows a long time ago. Now they almost film in real time. So it's almost like the shit is going on like it just happened a few days ago. And then they put that shit up on the air. So it's weird. But anyway, she's getting this tattoo. She's getting... Um, bar Barbie on her wrist, her inner wrist. And she's a little nervous because, you know, she says that she heard that that is the most tender spot and I will 100% agree. I told you guys how painful that shit is. Ooh, that was the most painful tattoo I've ever had was this one. That bitch about killed me. Nikki asked him, where's Kat? They start laughing and Ryan was like, well, he had to leave the shop. And she was like, oh no. And he was like, yeah, you know, it was no more love there and friends wasn't friends no more. You know, he had to shake a leg and move. And uh, that's when she starts to give him, you know, her uplifting speech. She's proud of him and there's no ceiling to this, okay? Whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve it. Confess it with your mouth and that it shall be. And those who don't want to follow behind you can fall back. She giving them all this and I was just like, what is she talking about? <laughs> like, I mean, I guess... I, the whole scene was I, okay child I, it was fine it was fine but this episode had filler episode all over it they could have held this how long is black ink chicago a run for something like 18 episodes see these kind of this this the whole episode was unnecessary but that was it Ryan's about to give Nicki Minaj her tattoo and we saw how that turned out on Instagram all right, you guys, that's it. Let me get off of here. I still got to do top of the blogs. I'm not sure if I'm going to even get top of the blogs up today. I have an orthodontist appointment, so I'm going to try to work hard to get Black Ink up today, which is Thursday, and top of the blogs probably won't be up until Friday. And I don't know why I'm telling you guys this, because you won't know it until this is up anyway. So, it, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I got to do that, and then I'm off to the orthodontist you guys make sure that you rate comment and subscribe to the channel i'm it's rocks the channel is for its rocks and everything else i do will be in the bottom bar all right all right so i hope that you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day and i plan on doing the same till next time rock stars bye